But yeah, so that's like it. I think the, there's one question that everyone asks. It's the first question that everybody asks about Love Island, and it's is it scripted? And it's not at all, which I think surprises a lot of people. Zero structure. Didn't uh, say that. Okay. So okay. what they say is, is it scripted? And mm. I think a lot of the reasons for that are when you take a normal conversation, normal discourse, day to day, and you put like a Justin Bieber song in the background mm-hmm. and like have a drone flying around or like some cool music <laughs> and a camera floats around on a boom arm and you chop it up cleverly. You, the whole point is to make it seem cohesive, right? It's to make these people that are on the show seem cool and aspirational and interesting to watch and engaging. And by virtue of that, you, it has to look polished, which I think can lead to people thinking that's contrived, mm-hmm. that's bollocks, which isn't true. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not scripted. However, there are what's called villa producers, and these are the um, point of contact between the cast, the primary point of contact between the cast and the production team. And what they'll do is they'll come into the villa, into the garden, which is usually where everybody is, and just take people off to one side that are having it. So me and you have had a, an argument because both of us like Yusuf. And... <laughs> <laughs> it's the trousers, man. It is. It's, I can't believe... <laughs> The first time that we videoed a podcast, you decided to wear... Do you know, sorry, go on. We, the first podcast we ever recorded, he wore bright green trousers. you still got those. I still have. I wore them the other day. You promised me you were going to burn them? I promised I'd burn the green high tops. So... <laughs> I mean, I just, I just fucking despair, don't I? Um, anyway, <clears throat> what was I saying? What was I saying? That's your one chance to pick that glass. I know. It goes back on the carpet. It goes back on the carpet. Um, yeah, so Villa Producers, they come in and me and you have had an argument about the fact that we like Yusuf. And what she'll do is she'll come over and she'll say, so Johnny, how do you, how do you feel about, uh, about your chat you just had with Chris? Oh, well, you know, like I'm a little bit worried because I thought me and Yusuf were going to get it on, but it's turned out that he actually likes Chris instead now and I'm feeling a bit weird. What I think you should do, maybe grab Yusuf, go over the far side, have a little chat with him. And then you go over. Are you touching your boobs while I'm... You just, are. You are. <laughs> You're used to audio only, and we've got video today. And so I'm just... Oh, well, the, cupping. The, You're doing self-cupping. And you've got... I mean, well, yeah, you're just immune, aren't you? So... <laughs> uh, and then say, go over the far side and have a chat. But when you go over the far side, you will see, like, they've set up shitloads, like, an army of cameramen outside of the boundary of the house, all pointing in your direction. Right. So... They don't, the, the show is not scripted, but is there a structure? Yeah, absolutely. The thing that everybody needs to remember when they're watching Love Island is that <clears throat> there's only 24 hours in a day. And if you produce any content as a cast member, as a Islander, as it's called, up until 4 a.m. ish, the next night at 8 p.m., that will be edited and be on TV. How many editors do they have? They must have a team. So, <clears throat> we there's a, a whole bunch of things that are surprising about it probably one of the most surprising things was that the villa that we were in I think it's a different villa now I haven't watched season 3 so I'm not sure the villa that we were in was very very nice and had the largest natural water pool in all of Europe it was huge it was massive so I was a, like it was absolutely huge and it was salt water as well so it's just crazy this millionaire French guy French investor's house a villa and he had the exact same villa brick for brick in France so you just went over to France the right? exact same Copy one the paste. same the same yeah the same layout the same masonry work but if you just do command A and select all and then <laughs> command C command, command C. V yeah return it's wet but when you're trying to put done. it down it needs to all be green don't strip oh. the formatting then. Don't hold that. <laughs> no, shift. but when you, just... you, you're copying it over and it'll be it'll like have the layout. And if any of it's red, then you can't oh, lay yeah, it down. It won't, yeah, you have to have. The... You have to write like. Bup, 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 bup. What there if you, you run out? Of, well, you wouldn't have run out of funds because you'd make you rich. So <clears throat> we go out of the villa sometimes. I'll get to that in a second. When we went out of the villa, it looked like Basra. <laughs> there is rows, and this is without exaggeration, a hundred. Industrial units, corrugated iron, like what you'd see on shipping containers mm-hmm. on the back of these huge freighters that are coming over. 
and then there's four in a row production office, all with huge air conditioning units on the back. Two in a row, Caroline Flax changing room. Five in a circle, a uh, task team, the guys that do the challenges, mm-hmm. like and there's the, a wood workshop and all the rest of it. And all of these have just been shipped over. And you go out and you have no, you're just this tiny little gnat, mm-hmm. like doing, just going, oh, I fancy that bird. And she doesn't <laughs> fancy me back. And you go it's outside and you're just like, just fucking always. hell. Mm-hmm. This that's is, really haunting, actually. It's a it's, very you, like, you've got, it, it, that is sci-fi the, horror kind of scenario. You just realise like, how much, how much of a bastard that operation is. Mm. It is, and this was the first one, and it's got exponentially bigger. So season one was probably a quarter as popular as season two, which is probably a quarter as popular as season three. So I can only imagine that that level of extremity has been <laughs> taken yeah. further. Yeah. So yeah, you go out and the, so the number of producers and and um, you'd feel like you're living in a simulation. Yeah, like. Well, it's, it's, it's like the Truman Show, isn't it? Where yeah. everything's engineered, like conversations are engineered, the environment's engineered, everyone's watching everything that you're doing. Yeah. I mean, the first time that I went outside, I couldn't believe just how many of these things there were. There's a full on-site canteen. They've got bus drivers working on rotation 24 hours a day, shipping people from the accommodation where they've bought a whole hotel for like two and a half months. Wow. <laughs> what, just for the team? Just for the team, just for the production team. They've got a, like a team of 60 security who are on rotation at all times. Round the villa. Round the villa, but also just around the production place. Right. And they're checking in at the top, like, beep, beep. Shh, we've got a uh, grey Ford Mondeo just driving down the hill. John, can you have a look? Shh, I, n- <laughs> no, no worries, mate, no worries. <laughs> it's just the, uh, it's just Domino's guy again for Joanne. Um, <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah, is it scripted? No, it's not. And... But do they poke the storylines? Yeah, they definitely do. I suppose there has to be a narrative. like, And I think editing, you can create any narrative you want from mm. quite a small amount of data, which I guess is why, you know, with politicians, they... So, you know, the Ed Miliband video that was going round where it looked like he was just psychotic because he just kept repeating weird phrases. And it's because, but it's because they just... Someone uploaded the entire take of five minutes. But he knows that he's going to get chopped into 20 seconds or something. So he has to keep repeating. So that and whatever. he just said it in 45 different ways. Yeah. And eventually got it right. Well, Put down the-, the rhetoric. Put it aside. Get onto the negotiating table and come together. And then you just keep you know, like, in every, what, every, what's different, what's every different iteration of that available. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, I mean, one of the things that you can't do, which actually sucks a little bit, is there's no second takes. And if it was scripted, there would be. Like, mm. You can't do stuff. And you don't get a second chance to say the same thing to people in terms of an impression. And that means that the reaction can't be contrived. Like the guys that are going on here, the guys that do Geordie Shaw, they're 16 seasons deep. They probably could have had sufficient media training to actually be able to fake a response. Mm-hmm. Like you've picked fucking Stephanie, 18, hairdresser from Wigan, and dropped her in the middle of Mallorca and said, right, Stephanie, we're just going to have to take that again. Can you just do the same reaction, please? Okay. Your head's going to explode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's so it's all first time. There's no nothing ever gets done again. Uh, so the challenges that they do, mm. there's challenges to win dates and stuff like that. Those do get second takes. They're much more highly produced, and the dates are as well. Right. One of the reasons for that is that in the villa you've got um, controlled camera setups. We've come in today and we've done, this is the first time that we're videoing something in here. It's the first time that the guys that are, that are recording it have had to come in and set up. And the longest amount of time of anything was set up. Mm-hmm. But if you were to come in and do it again, it would be boom, dropped straight in. So little known fact about Love Island, on the week before we went in on season one, they did an entire six day dry run with a whole separate cast, <clears throat> exactly the same, purely so that they could get the camera angles and the lighting right. Wow, just so they don't have to do all that while you're there. So there was a pair of Italian twins that come in on mine, like season two or season three or something like that. <clears throat> uh, sorry, episode two or episode three. Oh, right, okay. And they had a different pair of twins. So everything right. was the same, the same storylines. Jess Hayes, who's the girl that won, mm-hmm. was in the dry run and was producing such good content during that that they said, right, pull her out. We're mm-hmm. going to put her in the main one next week. And there's a girl called Naomi who was the one that actually got quite a bit of backlash. She was like fairly fit, blonde one. 
and she was supposed to go in at the start and they were like, she ended up being just waiting in Mallorca for like two and a half weeks ready for her to go in because she'd been like slipstreamed by this wow. girl who'd been proven to be interesting. Um, but one of the other things,